let's go. But I asked parents, how do you feel when you're on the phone? And they're like, mommy, 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 mommy. Yes. Give them the scenario. Give them the equal respect that you expect them to give you. It's good. all taught. So good. Oh man, I love this. This is good. Welcome. Can you imagine with me for a moment? No yelling, no screaming, no tears. Kids that actually what do what you ask them them to do. Kids that will actually want to contribute and help out. Imagine your kids smiling. Does that sound too good to be true? Well, get ready because we're going to make it happen. I've got Celia Kibler, author of Raising Happy Toddlers, How to Build Great Parenting Skills and Stop Yelling at Your Kids. She's here with me today and wait till you hear her story. Celia, welcome to Momnificent. Oh, thank you, Karen, so much for having me. And yeah, I know it's hard to imagine, but it's really true. You can do this. You know, All it's, right. it's true. Well, you're going to help us answer questions and anybody who has additional questions, put them in the chat below because we will circle back to you because Celia is a wealth of information and I am so fortunate and excited to have you here with us today. So Celia, what's one thing I love asking this that you've done recently that you may or may haven't done for a while that just simply brings you joy? So, so just something that I haven't done recently is honestly just realizing my value. And I say this like, you know, because people say, you know, I've been around for a long time and, and people don't think that people that have been around for a long time have self doubt or, you know, worry that you know, what am I doing here? Like, I must be nuts. But recently, I had a long conversation with someone. And it just dawned on me that, like, this is the right path. This is what I need to do. And the more parents I can affect, the more will stop yelling at their kids, the better the next generation will be. Stop doubting and just do more. Mm -hmm. And so I just realized and you know, yesterday was a super download day for the day of calm and, you know, download like into my brain. And I just get more and more passionate and excited about everything as I let the, the, the brain garbage go. Right. 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 Yeah. I, sometimes I tell people, I'm like, take that thought, throw it on the ground and stomp on it. It's not true. Right. <laughs> we're not, we're not giving it energy. Nope. Nope. Delete. Del exactly. I say delete, delete, delete. Someone will say something. I'll be like, delete. Nope. That's not true. Um, and for those listening, Celia is on a mission to get a million parents to stop. And I'll say decrease even yelling at your kids because, because it just happens. So Celia, what was life like growing up in your home as a kid? How did that inspire your, inspire you to write your book and eventually create an international day of calm? So in my house, I had a mommy and a daddy and they were married for before they both passed, they were married for almost 70 years and uh, <clears throat> very inspirational as far as their relationship goes. But my dad came from a father who was physically, mentally abusive. And my father never swore to bring the physical abuse in, but he had a very short fuse, very short temper, and we never knew what would set him off. So he was the yeller in the family. And I came out very much like my mom. My mom was a peacemaker and, you know, always tried to avoid confrontation with her, with her father, with her husband. Mm -hmm. And I was the same way. That's how I came out. I came out. Let's keep the peace. Let's right. not. Don't rock the boat. Know, right. Exactly. And my father, up to the day he died, always thought that we got along so great. And not that we didn't get along great, but I believe his illusion is because I never fought back. If he started yelling, I would I would leave. I'd be like, goodbye. And my sisters and my brother would fight back with him. You know, if he was yelling, they'd start yelling. And I'd be like, okay, I'm out of here. So in his mind, we got along the best. But, you know, we we've always had a good, a great relationship. But with him yelling, he did amazing things in his life. He was a very accomplished human. He did great things for humanity. He was one of the original four people that decided we need to put airplane seatbelts into automobiles. 
did all the testing, everything like that. I mean, impacting billions of lives because of this decision he made. He created the fastest warship in the world. He created seaplanes that would carry water to all fires across the world. And it just onward worked on the Apollo missions to send men to the moon and just a constant thing, one right after another for humanity. And yet, if you ask my father, you know, wow, what inspired you? And he would totally be like, anyone could do that. There's nothing special about me. Wow. And that is what an aggressive childhood, consistent, aggressive child does to you. Yeah, it's like never child. enough. It's never enough. You can right. never do enough. You're always wrong. And they grow up hating themselves, not hating you, hating themselves. And my father, he died at 92. And all that time, he regretted the way he acted towards my mom, you know, who he loved and truly cherished. And he hated himself for what he wasn't. Yeah, he was never enough man that does all of this. I literally made a banner right? of how many lives for one of his birthdays have been saved by the seatbelt. Wow. And he's like, anyone could have done it. And I'm like, no, you no. and your buddies decided this should happen and made it happen. That's something. And it's, and to feel so mediocre, that's what drove me. Right. Well then, so he passed away on what date? So he passed away April 5th of 2020. And a couple years, years after ago, my, my mom did. And a couple years ago, well, you had already written your book, right? Yes. Your book on yelling. And then tell us what transpired that inspired this April 5th International Day of Calm. So I decided that the key to not yelling other than your own, really gaining your own composure, like understanding how you react to triggers and irritability and disappointment, because that is how, what you're going to pass on to your children, the way you react. They're going to learn if I'm disappointed, this is, you know, this is how, what I'm going to do. I'm going to yell and scream. And when I wrote the book, I realized that kid, uh, parents needed a manual. They needed a manual. And they always go, why doesn't a man manual come with our children? How right. come everything comes with a manual, not children? And we go to college for how many years? Yes, to, to, for to do your job, for your job for the rest of your life. But nobody gets you in training right. to do your parenthood that you're going to do for the rest of your life. And every kid is different. Right. Yeah, I love Which it. Which is like the single most important job and so not even job, important. responsibility in the oh, universe God. is Incredible. raising the next generation. We have systems in place for everything. We everything. have systems how to feed, our, feed ourselves. We don't. We don't put our face in, well, some of us may put our face in our food and eat it, but the majority of us use utensils. We pull down our pants when we go potty. We have systems in place and nothing for parenting. Nothing. So I wrote a manual because one of the biggest ways of eliminating yelling in your home, other than getting control of your own emotions, is to eliminate the need to yell. When you don't have to yell anymore, when your children are listening the first time, when they're helping, when they're doing things simply because you asked, imagine that right. you ask a child and they actually do something. Well, that sounds like utopia. Yeah. Right. <laughs> when that <laughs> happens, all the triggers in the world are no longer present and you find yourself with more patience and being able to control a situation much more. All right. Well, that leads us to our first question from a parent right here. Here we go. Ready? How do you help de-escalate situations when my child is frustrated about not being able to verbalize their needs? So it is very important in parenting to see the world from your child's perspective. Mm -hmm. Remember that everybody, adults, kids, everyone approaches the world from their own perspective. Nobody sees it the same way. We can Good see point. it similar, but never the same way. Good a point. child who has a brain that is seriously underdeveloped because brains don't fully develop until we're 25, they're dealing with what they got. They don't have logic. They don't have reasoning. They don't even have compassion at birth. 
that's taught. All of that is taught. And so when you're dealing with a child who's frustrated, the first thing to do if they're throwing a tantrum is allow them to calm down. Don't keep talking to them. Don't keep saying, calm down, calm down, stop doing it, calm down. <laughs> Don't do I say, that because I, they I say can't. mute yourself. Yeah. Mute yourself. <laughs> like mute whatever yourself. it takes. Whatever Where's the remote? <laughs> Push the button. Oh, breathe. You can teach them to breathe. Smell the flower blow out the candles. You do that four times, they calm. You have to allow them to calm. Do not try to have a conversation with them upset and screaming or just being very frustrated because it's not going to get anywhere. Screaming matches lead nowhere. Right. And they just just make things worse. You're all screaming. Exactly. So all the emotions are elevated. Exactly. So calm it all down. Walk away if you need to, and then discuss recognizing their frustration, even if you're not sure, say, honey, I I think you might have been frustrated because of this, or you might have been disappointed because of this. Read their triggers. No. Are they hungry? Are they sleepy? Are they thirsty? Are they overwhelmed? Check the, you know, check those boxes and see if any of that could be what's affecting the situation. Mm, So good. So good. And I love the other word someone uses, be curious we just become more yes. curious, it might help us open up to something that we might not be noticing at first. Exactly. So here's another one. Sometimes my kid has to sneak the last word in and it drives me crazy. Do I let them have it and potentially keep the situation from escalating or what should I do? Do you want to win or do you want to find solutions? It's not a competition. This is not a competition between you and your child. You are the grown up. They are the child. They, you have a big, fully developed brain. They have a not so fully developed brain, depending on where, where they are in life. Unless like my children are 40 and thirties and they do have developed brains, but it's not a competition. It's your job to help your child take a little control of their own life in a life that for most kids, they have no control over. They, don't. they are told what to so do, many what, when to do, how to do it. But we offer them a choice, two choices on something negotiable. And all of a sudden, even though those choices are yours. That you're okay all with. All of a sudden, right, that you're Make okay them, with. Ones that you're okay with. Love that. All of a sudden, you're giving them back a little power. You pick. Yeah. You pick. You're playing right now. Dinner's coming soon. Do you need two or four more minutes? What would you like? Four minutes, please. Good. We're going to send the alarm at four minutes. What are you going to do? I'm going to go eat dinner. Excellent. There's the alarm. And even though you you could have walked in and go, stop playing, let's go. But I asked parents, how do you feel when you're on the phone? And they're like, mommy, 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 mommy. Yes. Give them the scenario. Give them the equal respect that you expect them to give you. It's good. all taught. So good. Oh man, I love this. This is good. All right. What happens to kids when parents discipline by yelling? So here's the truth. When you yell at a child consistently, and I'm not talking about, you know, we all yell, we all lose our temper. We have bad days and good days. It's part of being human. 90% of the time, everything is calm, cooperative, and wonderful. The little couple percent you come home, you've had a rotten day, you yell, then you go and you say, guys, I'm so sorry, not your fault. Had a bad day. Let's let's start over. But when you use yelling as a consistent parenting technique and aggression, you plant all those voices in their heads that I bet so many of you have in your heads, like everything I do is wrong. I'm not good enough. I'm not confident enough to even suggest something because my suggestion might be judged. So when somebody says, where do you want to go for dinner? You're like, whatever anyone likes, I'm happy. When you really want like Italian food, yeah. but you're not speaking up because you don't want to be judged. That all comes from yelling. All of that second guessing, that lack of confidence, that growing up really thinking, I'm a terrible person because nothing I do is right. Yeah. And everything, the opposite of that is everything I do is wrong. So you also create a child who grows up believing 
they are the bad kid. Yeah. And that is their expectation. And they take that expectation with them wherever they go, school, home, play, friends, they become the bad kid. And it's all because we stop recognizing all the good they do. And we only focus on the negative. And really at the heart of it, every parent wants their kid to know that they can do anything. They want them to grow and be confident and be full of self-esteem, right? They want to be able to make friends. What's the biggest question? Is my friend for, is my child fitting in at school? Do they make friends? Do they play well easily? Are they likable, right? And I love that you're just helping us get to the place where we can make sure that is released in them and find ways where we can watch and help ourselves in parenting where, yes, yeah, sometimes it feels like, like this is the next question. How can we help ourselves to stop yelling when sometimes it feels like it's the only thing that works? It is the only reason, let me say this, that yelling works is because your child becomes afraid of you. And I have, well, not that I haven't met a parent that wants that to happen. Majority of parents do not want their children to be afraid of them. Right. They want them to come to them and sure. approach them. Yeah. And if they're teenagers and they're struggling with somebody wants them to drink or they're at a party or sex or anything, right? parents want to know you can trust me. Yeah. But when you yell at a child, you are judging them, you are criticizing them. And judgment and criticism shuts a person down. Imagine if you're at work and your boss is always yelling at you. Oh, yeah. How long are you going to stay at that job? Oh, completely not. No. Not. And well, you're your, right. Your kids will can't shut quit. you down. You right. won't feel like you can do anything because you feel like nothing you do is right because that's that feeling you get, even if they just yelled once, twice, or three times. Somehow in your mind, you just think it's forever always the, right. not right. Exactly. And yeah. it's and it just is like you become, well, what what should should I do this? Should I not do this? Right. Am I gonna get yelled at? Am I not gonna yell at? Them? I you know, all do everything. this all the time. Mm -hmm. We're always like. Well, I'm not sure whether I should do that. Well, you know, I did this, but maybe, maybe that was not my best decision. We're always doing that. We're oh, like no. having constant conversations in our brain from. So exhausting. Lack, it is exhausting. And it's all from the lack of confidence that was not put in us when we were children. All right. So did I that love answer it. the question. Yes, because that I, and I love that that's what, what you're on the mission to change that. I love it. That's why I love that you're here. And I love every, every one of us who gets to hear this message. So here's another question. Why do you say, why do you Celia say learning how to smile when you talk is one of the biggest gifts you can give and teach your child? First of all, you can always hear a smile. Have you ever talked on the phone to a customer service person and you get this friendly person? Hi, how can I help you? And you're like, they're enjoying their job. They're having a good day. And then you get the opposite. And they're like, yes, you, you want me? Okay, yeah, I can do that. Not smiling, miserable. And how do you feel? You feel like, oh, I need yeah. to hang up this phone. They're yeah. bringing me down. But right. when you smile, you send a smile to someone else. It is completely contagious. And when you smile, you are non-threatening. When you are talking to your children with a smile, guess what they're going to learn to do? They're going to learn to smile when they talk. They go for job interviews. Who are you going to hire? The kid that's sitting in front of you smiling or the person that's sitting in front of you like all grouch? Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. It will take them through life like a rocket. I love that. I love that. Okay. So tell us what's happening on April 5th and how can we be a part? So April 5th, and I think I, I should have talked about it earlier, but I go off topic. I think so do I, you know, <laughs> so do I. <laughs> I digress. I love, we, love we go to another branch of that's, the tree. That's what, that's what everybody <laughs> loves listening to it. <laughs> Squirrel. So <laughs> all the time <laughs> back to dad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So my father it's so passed cool. away. It's coming up. This is so perfect. Yes. Perfect coming up very soon. Very soon. Oh, very soon. Mark your calendars. Yes. Set your alarms. So my dad passed away on April 5th of 2020, as I mentioned before, and I decided in his honor and also in my mother's honor, because my mother 
with all the stuff that she went through, the little mind games that my father played, even though he adored her, she was like the voice of calm. She was an angel on earth. And sometimes we told her as long as she hung out with dad, we're like that mom, you're like really an angel because (laughs) he's not an easy man to live with. And he'd be the first to admit it. And she'd be the first to admit it. But she was always calm. And so with my dad being the yeller, my mother being the voice of calm, I decided that learning how not to yell and not to be aggressive and to control your own reactions, to stop judging people, Mm. to stop criticizing to people, to stop ridiculing people, that doesn't just belong to parents. It belongs to everybody. Yes, I agree. And the only way we're going to change this world from all the hatred and division yes. and power, hungry people and all of that is to change future generations. Yeah. So I decide to create a day and it's coming up soon. It's April 5th on my dad's anniversary of his passing. And it it is the International Day of Calm. Now, people go, well, I'm not calm. I'm all energetic and I'm always having fun. I'm running around. Well, guess what? I am too. I I am too. That doesn't mean you're not calm. That doesn't mean you're not at peace with yourself. Right. When we have all the stress, we could be the happiest person. If we have financial stress or we have career stress, it's always affecting us. Stress is always there. And if you are a parent, your children feel all the stress you feel. They, they feel everything you feel. Yeah, You are sharing it with them, whether you intend to or not. Yeah. So it is very important that people start becoming intentional about their own peace. They exercise their disappointment muscles. They exercise their waiting muscles. They exercise their own ability to control their emotions. Because if we don't, who will teach our children to do the same? Yeah. How will they learn? We are models for them. We're actually a mirror of them. Our kids are mirrors of us. What we do, they eventually mirror and match us. So that's the important part of us finding that space. And, And everybody is. Think of the people they watch on TV. Think of what they see, their rock stars and their sports stars. Think of all that. We all model to our children. And that's why my new slogan, newly announced, guys, you ready? It's, oh, the, I don't, it's not even that? on the website yet, but it's going to be. My new slogan, because one of the things I thought about all yesterday, my new slogan is because yelling at our kids is not the answer. And it's not because it affects generations to come. After. It does nothing to inspire a child. It does nothing to empower a child. It only does the major bad thing of destroying their soul. Mm -hmm. And it makes them angry. And then they go out in the world angry. You know, when all this stuff happens, the first thing I think, other than my sorrow and regret for anyone that's impacted by this person's anger, is what kind of parents did that person have? Did they have parents? Did they have role models? We are all role models for children. And if we are going to change this world, we all have to be intentional, whether we're a parent or we're an aunt or we're a sibling Mm -hmm. or we're, you you know, educator, daughter, educator, name it. Yes. You're impacting children. Yes. Someone's always watching. watching. Yes. Absolutely. I I tell my students that at school, people are always watching you good, bad, indifferent. What are you going to choose to do? That's either going to inspire them or have them choose to do something that's not so great. Exactly. Always watching yeah, this. older so kids, powerful. younger so powerful. kids in school yeah. are watching older kids in they school. They are. They are. Older They're siblings always. are role models for younger siblings. And They're always watching and we have to take control of each yeah. of us. It's up to us. Right. And they're watching us more than they're listening to what Absolutely. we're telling them. Oh, that's so powerful. Absolutely. Okay. So Celia, I donated yesterday and oh, I invite you and challenge all of my oh, listeners I didn't talk to about the school. click on Is that the what link. you're going to ask me next? Yeah, sure. You can, you can throw that I in there. Jump ahead. I, I was thinking about it. I get excited. <laughs> so, so we um, also have a new initiative called Rescue a School. Yes. And there is a school in Uganda 
How did you that, find the school? Well, he found me actually. Wow. He was watching my broadcast and he reached out to me. Uh, I guess it was last year and asked if I would teach in his school. Oh so my I gosh. actually teach those kids virtually oh about gosh. every month and we do a class on something. And one time I was teaching on hygiene and I'm talking about brushing your teeth and how often you're supposed to brush your teeth and showering and washing and all of those things. And at the end of my lessons, we have question and answer with the kids. And one little boy raises his hand. And as matter of factly, as we are talking, he says, so Miss Celia, what if we don't have a toothbrush? Oh, wow. And the first thing my heart sunk because I'm thinking, I'm assuming they have toothbrushes, right? A, a dollar toothbrush. They oh, don't man. even have toothbrushes. And of course I told them, you know, you use your finger, you rinse your mouth, you swish in water, rinse out the food particles. And then I continued to send them like 500 toothbrushes and toothpaste and all those other hygiene things that we sent. Right. But you don't realize how privileged we are. Mm. And so we decided their buildings are falling down. These kids are so happy and excited to be in school. And they have termite planks of wood. That's kind of a building. They have jiggers in the mud floor and some of them don't have shoes. So those jiggers enter their body. And these are kids that have AIDS or orphaned from AIDS or often their family will give them to someone for early marriage because they need the money. It, it's and the closest yeah. school until he opened the brilliant school is like miles away. These kids don't have shoes. How are they going to get there? They're going to yeah. walk for miles without yeah. shoes. See, yeah. he opened the school and we decided with our rest year school, they're the first school we're going to build permanent buildings for. I so love that. We are so, raising funds for these babies. Hey, when I read that, my husband and I were so inspired. I was sitting there yesterday at my computer prepping for this interview. And, and we were both like, we're given to this. This is so exciting. This is just, oh, you inspire me. And I I, I just love that you're here today. And if, if anybody listening is inspired, the link is below. Feel free to, if you can, if you can't, I know what it's like. There's moments in my life when I can give. There are moments in my life when I haven't been able to give and and that's okay. And if you are in a space, you can, this is a beautiful and wonderful cause. Uh, so Celia, and, how and else? Can I add yeah. one more thing? Go so ahead. <laughs> one more thing. Sorry. I love is you. No, because, this is great. <laughs> and I, you. Jump in because, there. <laughs> because you mentioned if you can't afford to, to yeah. give, right. if you go on to dayofcom.org, there's a, a tab that's like projects things you can do at home to spread that. more calm, plan a family garden. You have a school or a business, plant a community garden. There's all kinds of projects that you can do. And you can think of your own project and add it to the list. So money isn't even, you know, yeah, as important to be. as your actions, as okay. you creating calm for your community, your city, your state, your world, you know, that's yeah. what it's going to take is everybody doing their part. Well, the um, end. so now you can talk. <laughs> well, as, as the principal of, of, of North Star Elementary School here in Delaware, I'm going to actually introduce this International Day of Calm to my students. And I'm so excited because even last Thursday, I needed to start the morning announcements with a chime and three breaths because I was having a rough moment. And so I just love this gift that you are sharing with each of us. I'm so glad I found you. And then also those listening, you can also follow Celia on her podcast, Pumped Up Parenting, where she has a wealth of topics. Like literally you just go down the list and there is something there this week that you can learn to change and grow and be a better parent. Um, Celia, I can't thank you enough. Is there one thing you want to leave our listeners with today? The one thing I want to leave you with is we all love to be appreciated. I'm sure many of you are in relationships right now where you don't feel appreciated. Appreciate each other. Mm -hmm. Appreciate your children. Your children do so much more good than not so good. Start noticing the good. Start taking time. They've been playing together and you've been on the phone and then they start fighting 
And what do we, most of us do? We go in and address the fight. We never address the half hour phone call that you were able to make because they were playing so nice together. Mention that, not the argument. They're having an argument because they're sick of each other. So mention that they were great and then go play with them for 10 minutes. Start recognizing the good. Start thanking your partner for things that they do every day. Start recognizing what the effort is that your child puts into their schoolwork, their home, the whatever it is, their own hygiene. Start mentioning it and letting them know you noticed. That's beautiful. Thank you again, Celia, for joining me. I can't wait to have you back on. I'd love to be back on anytime. That's all we've got for this episode of the Momnificent Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would be honored if you would subscribe and rate if you really liked it. I know wherever you're listening right now, it might not be the best time to leave a comment, but feel free to leave a question, a review, or a comment at any time. And until next time, remember, don't worry, be happy.